TJ McConnell has signed a four-year, $45 million extension with the Indiana Pacers. That means that his contract, he is now locked in for the Pacers for five years. So five years, $54 million, essentially, for TJ McConnell. Before we talk about what this means for the Pacers, and I do think it's worth kind of noting what it means for the Pacers in their long-term kind of flexibility and plans moving forward. But to me, this is like a totally reasonable deal for a guy that has turned into one of the best backup point guards in the NBA. Uh, a, these are the kind of stories that I love. Uh, guys who go from being undrafted free agents who are undersized, who a lot of people don't believe in, your Fred Van Vliet's, your TJ McConnell's, and who end up getting substantial significant payments throughout the course of their NBA career. Now, this is going to lock in TJ McConnell uh, for his NBA career to about $90 million, depending on how much of this is guaranteed. Uh, I don't know how much of this is guaranteed, uh, you know, based off the early reporting. It seems like quite a substantial amount of it. I would imagine that quite a substantial amount of it is guaranteed. But if all of this deal is guaranteed, He's going to make $90 million in his NBA career. That's fucking awesome. Shout out CJ McConnell. Yeah. And I mean, we can talk about the, the number and his age and things like that, but I feel like this really came off what he did in the playoffs. I feel like he was really good in the playoffs and he, he gets to the paint all the time. He has the little mid range pull up. Obviously he works his tail off on the defensive end, even if there you know are some, maybe some size limitations with matchups and those type of things, you know, the, the, regular season numbers don't just wow you but even in the regular season he was seventh and sixth men of the year voting so it's not like it, like it was just a really good year for him i will say sam he's a little older than what i realized we're entering yeah. age 32 season this is four more years spot track does it just has estimates so it's not saying what's guaranteed what's not i think i would feel a little more comfortable if maybe there's not full guarantees as we get to the tail end of it yeah. but just as the number you're way below the MLE throughout all of this. And if he can stay a top, what, even a top seven backup point guard in the league, that's more than worth it for that type of player. Yeah. So TJ McConnell had his best season of his career last year. Yes. Averaged 10 points per game, shot 56, 41, 79 from the field, averaged five and a half assists versus 1.5 turnovers. The thing with him is that the athleticism isn't really going. Uh, if you look at like his drives per game, right? Like he's consistently uh, among the league leaders in drives per minute played, right? Like he just always gets to the paint. He's always kind of wreaking havoc and creating that weird kind of tempo that he's able to somehow. It's weird that he gets into the paint as much as he does. It's the crazy. easiest way to put it. Yeah. But he does. He just knows how to live there. His is it crazy to call is... him a walking paint touch? I feel like he was a walking paint touch every game I watched. It was crazy. Yes. No, he really is. He is a walking paint touch. He's a good defender. Like, he brings a lot of value to the table. It really just depends on how long the athleticism yes. ends up holding up for him. Yeah. Uh, I'm with you. I would hope that. There are probably some non-guarantees near the back end of this deal. The last year particularly, I think, could be a little bit dicey. That would be like an age 36 season. Yes. But, man, his footwork is unbelievable. He knows how to play in ball screens, the passing ability, the decision-making, the defense. Like, he's a really, really valuable player. Now, it is a little bit interesting what this means for the Pacers kind of moving forward. So, this coming off season. As of right now, I believe that they have like somewhere between like 168 to 170 million guaranteed for Tyrese Halliburton, Andrew Nemhard, Aaron Neesmith, Pascal Siakam, TJ McConnell, Obi Toppin, Obi Toppin, Obi Toppin Ben Shepard, Ben Matherin, Matherin Johnny Furphy, Jarris Walker, Walker seven, right? Yeah. Yep. So that's that's 10 guys right there that they have like under contract, right? That does not include miles Turner. Nope. Right. Unrestricted free and agent. The tax threshold for that season is something like, you know, we're going to call it like 188 million, like right in that ballpark is what, what is expected to be the luxury tax threshold. I'm assuming miles Turner is going to get around like 30 ish million. 
let's say, right? Sure. Awesome player. I think that there would be no uh, shortage of interest in a big who is one of the best shot blockers in the league who can also space the court and shoot it a little bit. I, I would imagine that like he will be among the most sought after free agents in the NBA next off season. Claxton got yeah. 28 a year or it's 28 this year. Hartenstein's 30 this year. And those are guys that just yeah. signed those this past off season. So with where the Pacers cap sheet is heading, they're going to have kind of two choices here. Either a, they're going to have to be like a real luxury tax team, which has been quite rare throughout the course of their history or B they're going to have to make some moves around the margins, right? They're going to have to decide, Hey, you know, we're not going to extend Ben Mather in long-term. We don't see him as a long-term piece. We're going to move him. Um, you know, we don't love where that OB Toppin deal is heading. Maybe after the season, we're going to move him. Right. I'm not saying that any of these things are what's going to happen and what reality is, but those are the kind of trade-offs that this Pacers team, having now extended Andrew Nemhart, having extended uh, Obi Toppin, having extended, obviously, Tyrese Halliburton and Pascal Siakam and Aaron Naismith, frankly. That is where the trade-offs are going to have to come now. They don't have the ability to give Miles Turner that crazy bloom payment like they did a couple years ago and then bring the salary down like they were able to. And the, there are going to have to be trade-offs as they build. And that trade-off could just be paying luxury tax and money from ownership, or it could be that they might have to make some roster moves around uh, this core. Yeah. And that's, if you don't retain Miles, like the thing with Miles is like, that's the one position. I don't know that you have a ton of depth. Like, obviously you weren't going to let, you know, Hallie and Pascal like there, but you know, if you would have let Obi top and walk this summer, Sam, you have Jairus Walker right there. To, to step into it there's not another starting you know there's not another center who i think you would say oh that guy's going to turn in to a starting center for you know jalen smith left in free agency it's right. wiseman and isaiah jackson and and i know we've talked about top and playing center off the bench and things like that but not starting at center so I guess what I'm saying is there's not a direct replacement. You know, if they let a, yeah. if they let a Benedict Matherin go, maybe you talk yourself into, okay, well now Johnny Furphy's the next guy in line for that or something like that. Yep. You know, with Turner, I just don't see the guy on the roster where you can say, oh, okay. If they lose him, that's going to suck, but they have this young big man to step into the role. That guy's not currently on the roster. And with the way that they play, I think that they actually really desperately need that floor spacing big, as we'll talk about when we sure. go through the yeah. expectations for them moving forward. I think it's really, really important that they have that floor spacing big around Tyrese Halliburton, around TJ McConnell, getting into the paint, driving, consistently being able to get those paint touches. So to me, the McConnell deal, and look, like I'm not saying this is a bad deal at all. McConnell is, and we'll see where the guarantees come in and everything like that. Seriously, you talk to people around the league, like CJ McConnell is beloved uh, in part because of the stuff I talked about earlier on, right? Where he has worked his absolute balls off to be able to get to where he has gotten to, where he has a chance to make $90 million in his NBA career, right? And where he's 32 years old and just had one of the best seasons, if not very clearly the best season of his NBA career. But this deal does come with some future trade-offs that could occur. And I am intrigued to see how the Pacers handle that moving forward now, because there are a lot of things that could be on the table for them. And it becomes harder from this point, not easier now. Yep. yep. The, the thing that I would be worried about if I was a Pacers fan is you look at what happened when the Hawks made the West made the Eastern conference finals a little bit earlier than expectation under Trey young, Kevin Herter, um, you know, DeAndre Hunter missed that uh, playoffs by and large, but like that group of players before they made the DeJounte Murray deal, right? Mm -hmm. They ended up paying like all of those guys, like Capella and everything, giving those guys extensions and they kind of stagnated right now. I think this Pacers team is built way better than that team is in terms of future long-term viability. But like there are comparisons to be made in terms of just, they got there a little bit earlier than expected. They give, you know, Kevin Herter the extension in Atlanta's case. 
Andrew Nemhard the extension in the Pacers case, where you and I think that Nemhard extension looks like a great deal, but you know, and we I thought the Kevin Herter deal looked like a great deal at the time, and they were able to get a first round pick back, but like they haven't really gotten anything for yeah. that at this point yet. Uh, you know, they do the Bogdanovich deal. Bogdanovich has turned out really good for them, but you know, it hasn't resulted in wins and losses. And now, you know, they go in, they bring in DeJounte Murray to try and take the leap. They end up sending DeJounte out for a uh, you know cost of not having reached back to those heights, as well as I think like a net loss of one first round pick, let's call it. Uh something in that ballpark. So it gets harder. My point here is not to say like Pacers fans should be worried. It's just that it gets harder from here, yeah. right? Things become more difficult. The Eastern Conference, I think the Pacers probably should be playing for like two to three years down the road as opposed to right now, like two to three years down the road, you can see a world where, okay, Paul George has aged out. Joel Embiid, you know, has potentially set himself up with some problems uh, injury wise. And Giannis, you know, is starting to age out a little bit. That's kind Boston. of what you're hoping for. Right. Boston, Boston either gets too expensive or ages out. Right. Now, again, like we're not saying that these things are necessarily like 100% going to happen. But if you're Indiana, I think that's the window you're hoping for more than anything. So if I'm them, I understand why you're doing these deals while also trying to figure out, you know, how do we best set ourselves up for that window? In their case, they have all these interesting young players who are going to continue to grow and mature and get better in Jairus Walker, hopefully. Um, hopefully, Obi Toppin takes another leap. Maybe Matherin can be the kind of guy that gets better. But with the Toppin and McConnell deals, particularly this summer, they've made the decision-making process. They've sped it up a little bit uh, is the easiest way to explain it because now they have to make choices around their core with Miles Turner, with Toppin, with, you know, Nemhard, with Matherin, with uh, Jairus Walker, because Matherin is going to be looking for an extension next summer, potentially. If he plays well this year, he's going to want an extension. Miles Turner is a free agent. You're going to have to pay him. So the fact that they're locking into money now is a really interesting situation. The thing is, you do have a bunch of contracts that are going to be very tradable, though, and yeah. could be very easily put together to go get somebody if you wanted because you have you know if, if even if you just look next year 14.5 for Toppin 11 for Neesmith 10 for McConnell 9 for Matherin 18 for Nebhard I'm not saying you would trade all of these guys but let's say they go through this season and they take a step back or something doesn't work or whatever you can go into the offseason and you have some talented players on good contracts that you could consolidate and go get whatever the piece is that wasn't there. I don't think that's what's going to happen, but you have kind of locked in a group, but within locking them in, you didn't give outrageous contracts that you can't get off of. Yeah, no, that's right. 